Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Let me talk about the uh, the phone that uh, just the whole world was waiting for. Um, in fact, so much attention, so much hype around the Moto X phone that I think a number of people, especially geeks, were very disappointed when they finally got the story on the Moto X. Uh, this is the first phone from uh, Google-rola. I call it Google-rola. You know, Google bought Motorola about 12, for $12.5 million about a year and a half, two years ago. The deal finally closed about a year ago. And finally, uh, after all that time, uh, this is the first phone to come out of that union. There have been other phones. In fact, Motorola announced phones uh, just a couple of weeks ago, D uh, new droids, but those were already in the pipeline. This, this Moto X is the first. Now, um, let me talk a little bit about what makes it unusual. It isn't the specs. In fact, if you look at the specs, they're, they're kind of unremarkable. Um, it is a simple phone, right? Very clean. I'll show you the size in relationship to uh, another very hot Android phone. By the way, this is an Android phone. This is the HTC One. Uh, HTC One also 4.7 inch screen, but it's both thicker, taller, and wider than the Moto X. That's because they were able to uh, get this uh, Moto X into uh, the uh, phone, the big screen, without, you know, it goes almost all the way to the edges of the bezel. It isn't quite the high resolution, uh, I'm sorry to say, that the HTC One is. It's a little bit disappointing in resolution. It's only a 720p phone, 1280 by 720. Now, I should point out that's 316 pixels per inch, just 10 pixels per inch uh, fewer than the iPhone 5. So in every way you could call this, Apple uses the term retina, but you could call this a very high res display. But I think there's some geeks who say, well, 4.7 inches, it should be 1080p like the HTC One. I, it doesn't bother me. And one of the reasons Motorola made this choice but there are really two reasons. One's for better battery life, the other is for better performance. It is a dual core processor. It's actually a, a larger than a processor. It's the X8 system, which includes dual core ARM processors running at 1.4 gigahertz, four GPUs. These are 320, Adreno 320 GPUs, very fast GPUs. You can see what they prioritize based on this. And there are two dedicated Motorola designed DSP chips in here, which uh, are due. Uh, uh, artificial language, uh, natural language interpretation. They're the always-on listening chips, and they give this phone some very interesting software features. I'm going to get to the software in a minute, because really that's the most important part of the phone. But just to finish the hardware specs, a 10-megapixel rear camera, 2-megapixel front-facing camera. It comes with Android 4.2.2, not the latest Android. That was a little bit of a disappointment. But Google and Motorola assure us they will get the newest Android very quickly. And I'm not surprised because if you look at this phone, it is very much a pure experience. Gone are Motorola's long-hated blur. This is the AT&T version, and you'll see it only has two AT&T programs on it, My AT&T and Visual Voicemail. It is not larded up with carrier software. And in fact, it's a very pure Google experience. This is about as close to a Google experience as you can get. It has two Motorola apps on it, the Motorola Assist, which is a very cool app. I'll tell you about that in a second. And Migrate, which lets you move from other phones, not just Motorola phones, but other Android uh, devices. And then for the rest, it's pretty much stock Android. It's Google Maps, it's Google Now, uh, a lot of Google Now. It's really almost a Google Now phone. Um, the uh, calendar is an older version of the Google Calendar. I hope they'll update that, but until then, of course, you can to download your own. And it has a different camera app. And there's a reason for that. Instead of the stock camera app, and by the way, no physical buttons. It is the stock that, that what, what Google wants everybody to do. I think Google's using this phone in a way to tell handset manufacturers what they expect. It uses the soft buttons that are typical of modern Android installations. In fact, the only buttons on this are the power button and an uh, up and down rockers uh, for the volume, and, and that's about it. It's, I think, a very nice design. All plastic, but very clean. This is a, a, a soft touch back. Uh, now, let's talk about the, the differences that really make this phone stand out. First of all, uh, it's going to be available on all U.S. carriers. AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, T-Mobile, um, in the next few weeks. 200 bucks on contract. We don't know what the off-contract price will be, 
but uh, it's pretty sure it'll be like most of the other high-end Android phones, between $550, $600 to $650. They have 16 gigabyte and 32 gigabyte versions. This is a 16 gigabyte version, and out of the box, it comes with almost 12 gigabytes free. That's one nice thing about having a simple Google experience and not a lot of bl carrier bloatware. You have a lot of free space. Uh, on this phone. But the software is what distinguishes this. And I'll show you a few things. First of all, one of the reasons it doesn't have a stock camera app is so that you can do this. When you twiddle your <laughs> wrist three times, it launches, even when in locked mode, it launches the camera app. You can, of course, do it the old fashioned way. You can even turn this off. But that's nice because it's very easy. I'll show you. I'll turn off the phone and I'll show you very typically how I might use it. And I've been using it for the last few days is you take it out of your pocket, you go like this, and it's ready to take a picture. And there you go, I've taken a picture. It also doesn't have a shutter button. Uh, the camera app has a touch to focus and shoot button. And it's pretty quick. You won't miss a lot. That's taking a nice picture of the inside of my palm right now. Maybe I should move my hand out of there. And it's pretty good. It's actually a pretty good uh, uh, camera application. Uh, 10 megapixels. I'm a little disheartened by the amount of softening or processing that Motorola has chosen to do in software, and I'm hoping later versions of this phone will uh, do a little bit less. The pictures are okay, though. In fact, uh, Brian, I gave you some shots. Uh, we'll take a look at some of these. It does best in low light. has a little trouble with flare, and this is a fairly low light picture of my food. You can go back and forth through these and, and show them. If you zoom in on them, you, oh, this is a slow-mo video. It has a one-quarter speed video capability. That's pretty nice. It doesn't do audio at one-quarter speed. But when you shoot at one-quarter speed, you can also have the option to play back at full speed. Color is very good. I think the color is completely accurate, uh, and it's fairly crisp. All I would say is, Motorola, please turn down some of the sharpening. Here's another uh, slow, super slow-mo uh, image. It's kind of fun to have that uh, capability. HDR is also built in, panorama, but no Google Photosphere capability. That is not part of uh, the uh, camera on this. Camera, I'd only have to give it about a B. Uh, on the other hand, in terms of launching and getting to work, it is absolutely an A+. plus. It's the fastest camera and the easiest camera to launch. So I've been very uh, happy with the results there. Sound quality is very good on the record. I, I recorded a very loud uh, band, not this one, <laughs> but another very loud band sitting right next to the speakers and it was able to give me good uh, audio recording. That's perhaps because it has three microphones, uh, including noise reduction uh, microphone on the uh, on the phone. So I'm, I'm happy with the camera. I wish it were a little bit better quality, perhaps a little less processing. There you go. Those are the images. So that's software uh, change number one, the way you launch the camera. Of course, all the attention has gone to the second software uh, feature, and that is always on, always listening. One of the reasons they have those separate dual DSP chips is so that the phone can sit on the counter. I'm just going to put it down here, and is always listening. You train it when you first get it out of the box by saying the phrase, OK, Google Now, three times. Once it knows your voice, when you say, OK, Google Now, to the phone, it'll wake up and you can send it uh, commands. That's all without touching it. I'm going to get out of that because obviously what I said was completely worthless. Let's, uh, let's try something else, though. OK, Google Now, what's the weather? Now, I'm going to hold this up to my microphone, Brian, so you can hear its response. It's 70 degrees and clear in Petaluma. So it knows where I am because it has GPS and, in fact, understands the query and speaks to me the answer. Now, Google Now is already capable of this if you have Google Now on an Android phone. You, the difference here is it's touchless, but you can do everything that you can do with Google Now on this phone by touching a, an Android phone and giving Google Now the command, you know, pressing the speak. So the big difference here is the fact that it's always listening. People were concerned that always listening would be a problem because of uh, battery life, but I can, I'm here to tell you the battery life on this is, is actually very good. I'll show you. I unplugged the phone this morning at 9 a.m. It is currently at 67%. I don't have the battery saver on. And let me see if I can show you this. Uh, and uh, so we've been on for eight hours, three minutes, 31 seconds, and we're more than half. And that's been my experience, 16 to 18 hours of battery life. Uh, and in fact, this is with the screen on quite a bit. I was playing with it uh, an hour and six minutes. Um, so excellent battery life on this. Do not worry about it always on depleting the battery. It does not. And, and uh, Motorola worked very hard to make it uh, do that. So it's always listening. You can give it Google Now commands. Okay, Google Now. Oh, I'm, it's not hearing me. Okay, Google Now. What is sugar? 
And just like Google Now, it will go out, it'll do the search, it'll come up with the answer, and it will speak it to you. Especially sugar cane and sugar beet. Not perfect, but kind of like Siri, it is a great, exciting way of taking the first steps towards having a computer you can talk to and respond to you. Never touching it is great, doesn't kill the battery life. I like the camera, uh, but let me give you the pros and cons. I know I'm going on and on, and I've taken notes here, so let me just read them to you. Uh, the uh, pro, obviously, is that always listening to Google Now is great. You can even say, when I'm in the car, I want you to read text messages to me. Let me know who's calling, respond via voice. It's, it's a really great phone for driving around, and it knows you're driving around. Uh, based on the fact uh, that you're moving at a certain speed. The camera launch and shoot, I think, is the fastest I've ever seen. Uh, the customizable design, I didn't mention this, AT&T is going to have the ability to uh, try 17 different backs and a number of different accent colors. Uh, that's at AT&T exclusive right now, but eventually will be available on the other U.S. carriers. Battery life's very good, and it is a very pure Google experience. I was hoping for a Nexus phone. It's about as close as you can get, but that brings up one of the cons. They're shipping it with an older version, alas, of uh, Android 4.2.2. They do say it'll get 4.3 pretty quickly, uh, but in that respect, it isn't exactly a Nexus phone. Uh, the camera quality, not as good as I'd like, and I have to mention the price. It's $200, which, uh, you know, for a lot of people who are very spec conscious, seems to be high for something that is really more akin, say, to a Nexus 4. In fact, this reminded me a lot of the Nexus 4 phone in many ways. Another negative, of course, no removable SD storage and no removable battery. Um, I think that's becoming less of an issue. I wish it had Qi charging, uh, the wireless charging uh, the Nexus device has, um, does not. And I think that's because they wanted to have as much room as possible for a battery in here. Uh, it is on balance, though, a competent, really competent, very nice phone. Uh, one more negative for our international viewers, North America only. It will not come out at all, as far as we know. Uh, around the world, Motorola says we have something different for you and other nations. Uh, I'm going to give it a definite buy uh, when you compare it to the HTC One, the Galaxy S4, an upcoming unknown iPhone 5. It is in that category. If you're heavily into Google now or you want a pure Google experience, I think that's a very strong recommendation for this. And I have to say, uh, one of the things that makes this phone desirable is how it feels in your hand. And until you've held it and used it for a while, uh, it's hard to appreciate really how good this phone is. This is a phone that Motorola very clearly has designed not for the spec, you know, fanciers, but for people who want a functional phone, uh, a phone that does things that is, uh, that is useful. I've really just scratched the surface of what this phone can do. There's a lot more, but I've run out of time. So there you go. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, a definite buy. In fact, I will buy one uh, when I can a little later this month.